Thank you, Vanj. Thank you for your letters. Uh, I mean, for your letter in the essay. And now let's have a look at the letter about um, the apology for the absence. <clears throat> you saw a madam. Great. What do we have here? Yours faithfully. Very good. Just you don't really need to capitalize faithfully. Kivanj Oz. Okay, great. I'm writing to you in relation to the letter that I have received, which case number is, and I would like to bring the reason to your attention as well as how sorry I am to be late to submit my evidence between the requested time period. Okay. You're trying to put a lot of things together in one sentence. Okay, let's agree on one thing. Um, let me uh, read the letter until the end, and then we'll discuss how it needs to be um, paragraphed slightly differently, uh, especially in terms of arranging your information, right? My name is Kivanj Oz, and my student number is this and that. I'm taking the big data course, and the current term is my second. However, last week I faced with an unfortunate event, food poison, and it affected my own life for a while. I had to spend the last five days at the hospital's emergency room to recover. This is why I was not able to hand in paperwork to the committee on time. Once I was allowed to leave the hospital, I was being able to get back to my normal life. Again, I would like to give my apologies. Jeez, apologize. I was not able to do the paperwork by now. If you ca could consider to give me the second chance for taking this test again, I would appreciate it. Kindly find enclosed sick paper uh, from my doctor as well as the um, hospital record. If you require further details, please don't hesitate to contact with me. Yours faithfully, Kivanj uh, Okay, good. So, um, the good part. Let's start with the good part. You have um, all the right components. You have mentioned everything. You have explained what had happened. You have uh, the resolutions to consider. You have identified yourself. You have provided apologies. Good. The thing is that we really have to paragraph the um, um, task appropriately so, the, um, uh, so that the reader can understand clearly um, what's happening. Okay, so I'm not going to rewrite it for you, but I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, try and reword it just verbally for you. Okay, so the first paragraph should uh, is almost there. So I'm writing to you regarding the. Uh, you can say that um, the uh, uh, my absence from this and that exam. You really have to say which exam. For example, if you are taking the big data course, you have to say uh, for my absence from the big data course, and you have to include the name of the course. For example, BD uh, 2307, something like this. Uh, my case, my student, my, uh, my name is Kivanj Oz, my student number is so-and-so, -so, and my case number is so-and-so, -so because this is your identification. It comes right away. So the first uh, letter paragraph really has to state everything very, very clearly. Um, your personal data and what uh, you're writing about. Uh, this is a bit too much, and this is a bit too informal. Uh, this letter is intended to be read by one of the members of the examinations committee. So this means that you have to be very formal. Like, mm, imagine that you're writing to the president of the country, like something like that. Okay? Uh, so, um, you don't really need to say, I would like to bring the reason to your attention. Um, um, you can say yeah, that um, uh, further, I will uh, provide explanation for my absence and um, uh, my deepest apologies uh, for um, for what happened. Something like that. Okay. Uh, I, I would like uh, I would like to submit the evidence for my absence for the requested for the um, uh, time period mentioned above. Oh yes. And when you say that you were absent um, in an exam, you really have to say on which date that happened. For example, May 5th, uh, 2018, 2019, okay. Uh, we have already discussed the identification, right? So um, the second paragraph would have to be exclusively uh, what happened. So the second paragraph is the explanation of what had happened, right? Okay. So, um, last week, uh, again, you need the precise date. I um, 
uh, had to face an unfortunate event, and namely food poisoning. It's not poison, poisoning, uh, which is the sickness. Uh, this is how we call it in English. Okay. Um, you shouldn't say it affected all my life for a while because this is too personal, but you can say uh, uh, which, um, I don't know, affected uh, my ability to function. I had to spend the last five days um, at the hospital's emergency room to recover, and this is why I was unable to hand in, you don't need the, um, the hyphen here, my paperwork to the committee, my paperwork uh, regarding my absence to the committee on time. Once I went, uh, all the rest is okay. Uh, I was able to return to my normal life. Try not to use the verb get anywhere because it is very informal. Okay, uh, again, uh, I would like to kindly present my apologies, right? You don't just say, give my apologies, present my apologies, and you have to spell apologies like this, apologies. Um, you don't need this sentence, you don't need this sentence at all. Um, and now the resolution, right? If you could, uh, could I kindly ask to be given uh, a second chance or a chance to reset or retake the test? Um, um, if yes, I would greatly appreciate that. Kindly find in the enclosed doctor's note. Uh, the thing is called doctor's note, as well as my a copy of my hospital record, which confirms this, this, and that. Right, so you are pretty close in style, but some of the parts in your letter are not. Anyway, if you require further details, please do not hesitate to contact me, and all the rest is great. So anyway, this is a very nice letter. Just remember, you really have to be very serious, very impersonal, very factual, and very uh, formal. Now let's have a look at the essay about the Olympics. There's currently a discussion surrounding Olympics. Okay. Semicolon. It is commonly thought by some people that the Olympic Games, the Olympic Games, has no impression anymore in the latest era, in the modern era, or lately, has a, you can say produces produces no impression anymore. In my opinion, I agree with the statement. Okay, if you you either use one structure or the other one, why? Because both are excessive. For example, you could say, I agree, or you, can, you could even emphasize, I do agree with the statement. Uh, okay, also, there are some other games are taken in the first place from this platform as a result of shifting feelings from patriotism to globalization as well as increased economical perspective. I'm not sure I understand what you meant, Kivant. So you say that you agree with the statement. This means that uh, you agree with the fact that we don't need the Olympic Games anymore, right? Well, it's, it's, it's they're pointless, right? If you do, you really have to say because reason, argument one and argument two. Why don't we do that? Now, this part, I fail to understand. Seriously, I don't know what you mean. Uh, you say that some other games are taking the first place from this platform. Do you mean that someone re uh, uh, um, removes the uh, some of the sporting events from um, the Olympic Games? I'm not sure. This is complicated, but I kind of I have a feeling that I understand, but I'm not sure. Again, so you really have to rephrase it. There is one of the major issues to lose Olympics importance is that change in cultural dynamics between nations. Okay, I think we need to fix this. One of the major issues which contributes to uh, losing um, the importance of the Olympics is the Changing cultural dynamics between nations. Okay, nice start. Now, century, dozens of peoples, oh, people, people, dozens, I think uh, thousands. A dozen is 12. You probably mean thousands because you say are able to travel all around the world. So it's not just 12 people, right? Uh, and they have a chance to see other cultures and nations. Due to this, those people become more open to cultural trade than the people who live in their small communities in the past. That the people who, why in the past 
who lived probably or who used to live. Patriotism and nationalism are no longer considered as a major personal identity between current generation. Okay, this statement is confusing because you are not interpreting the, uh, the vocabulary correctly. You cannot say that nationalism is a major personal identity. Um, you probably mean, correct me if I'm wrong, wave, write many emails if I'm right or wrong. Uh, tell me, uh, do you mean that the new generation doesn't identify with the idea of pet patriotism and nationalism? So there is no need to represent your own country, so who cares about the Olympics? As a result of this idea, it is not a priority for people if their country if their country is the best in the games, in the games it has to be capitalized because you don't mean any games, it's not the Hunger Games, it's the Olympic Games, or represent their national identities on that, I wouldn't say platform, but let it be. Because people, are cha because people have changed their focus from the small world to the worldwide angle. Okay, interesting. So, this happens because, okay, you really have to, to have a subject here because otherwise your because sentence becomes a fragment. Okay, and now let's say thus, and you need a concluding sentence. You need to conclude on this paragraph. I like your idea. You're one of the few people who says, yes, who cares about the Olympics? Great. I like the, the other side. You're great. Another good reason to consider why the Olympics, the Olympics are no longer considered as a major field, field of what? As a major field of importance, a major, I'm not sure why you have field here, okay? So I'm going to mark it. Um, I feel that you need another word here. Is that, in, is the increased profit from sports, okay? As a major um, area, perhaps, area of interest. Yes, now it makes a bit more sense. Other sports, sport branches, Football can be taken as an example, have more supporters in these days. Uh, well, uh, we might say that football is also included in the Olympic Games, but yeah, it's not the same thing. But uh, I wouldn't say other sports branches. I would say other sport tournaments, for instance, um, in football, can be taken as an example. And then here we say we can say they certainly have more supporters in these, these days, and you don't need the N supporters. I would say other sport tournaments, for instance, um, okay, yeah, for instance, in football or let's say tennis, right, can be taken as an example. They certainly have more supporters these days, like the Wimbledon, let's say, uh, more supporters means more profit for the for big brands such as Adidas, Nike, and so on. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't say and so on. This is very conversational and others. Consequently, market leaders invest more money in those sports. Very nice. Very nice. Therefore, those brands can be considered as one of the major responsible, uh, let's say, actors, right? We need we need the, the word for the people who does something, and that's the word actor. Not as an actor as in movies, but an actor as a person who does something. For this focus shift, not shifting, shift, between old school competition games, beautiful old school competition games, to popular games. Okay. Advertisement agreements, personal sponsorships for the famous players are some of the result of this change movement. Not only does this concept provide beautiful use of inversion, more income for those companies, but it, it also gives a role to thrive, new focus for people to change. Oh, wait a second, a role to thrive or a new focus? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can say, and a new focus for people to change their attentions towards other fields. Beautiful. I like your argument. I really love your argument. And your language got more interesting. I really hope it's your language, right? You didn't use any help, did you? In conclusion, in, in the global perspective, people are no longer big fans. Well, people is plural, right? So we have to say big fans of national movements like the old times, like in the old times. I wouldn't say national. I would say nationalist. 
and this impacts our appetite as well as economical view of the games. People had changed, priorities had changed, and hence the Olympics had been influenced by them. I love your conclusion. I love your conclusion. This is beautiful. Look at how beautifully you have progressed from this introduction, which is kind of kind of tricky. Uh, but now I understand what it means. I'm not sure what you mean by this, but uh, now I understand the keywords. But you need to phrase it differently. Promise me that you will phrase this differently and you will rewrite this essay because this essay needs your help and attention. So, great ideas, great perspective, um, great uh, coherence in the second body paragraph and conclusion. Keep up the great work and you will absolutely get much, much better.